delighted to be joined by former Peterborough United defender Mark Little. Mark, how are you doing? Fantastic. Hope everyone's well. Um, I wanted to talk to you about your uh, your time at Posh because um, different to several other players, you obviously signed on loan first, actually during the, the first championship campaign. What do, what do you remember about that loan move? Because you'd obviously had a few loans prior to, to joining Posh. So how did it all come about? Uh, really quickly, I was, I, was, I was at Wolves as a parent club. Um, and I was trying to get into Mick McCarthy's first team. I believe I think I think we were in the Prem at that point, or, or we were in the chapter, one of the two. And um, he just come and said, "Let's towards the end." It's the last I think it was the last three months, and he said, "Look, your your appearances are going to be limited." And I've got Peter on the phone. And they are trying to stay in the championship and they promised you games, obviously at the right level. So do you fancy it? And yeah, games in the championship at the time was definitely on my on my list of things to be doing. So off I did that, that afternoon, I think it was, packed my bags and then headed down to Peterborough. Did, did, was there any reservation in your mind? Obviously, as you say, we were fighting relegation at that time. Or did you just see it as first team opportunities at a level that you wanted to play at? Yeah, I needed to. I, I don't. I didn't play many games that season for Wolves. I don't know, even like three, four, or five. And then they had a really good reserve league that year, and and I was playing in that. Um, so I, I did. I was getting the games, but not where I needed to be. So anywhere in the championship to get some games was just a tick in my box. Also, obviously, I played playing at the back. I was proper at the back at that point, centre back, right back, um, and. In my head, it was like, yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of defending. So that that would show Mick McCarthy that I would be able to get into his team, which did happen. I come down there, did a lot of defending the last three months. Um, it was when I got there, I th- I, it was near. We nearly nearly had to win the last. I think we only had we could only win lose one or two games, uh, or we'd be going down. And and that was the fate was determined in the last in the first couple of weeks I got there. So it was just a just a battle then and. I enjoyed it. Obviously, I enjoyed it. I went back. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Gary Johnson was the manager at that point, I think, in, in terms of around that sort of period of time. What was he like? No, it, was, um, it wasn't actually. It was, um, it was uh, Gannon. It was Gannon. We'd, we'd already mm. got to that point. Um, what, was, what was Jim, um, Jim like with you then? Because obviously, speaking to people that played under him and, and people like Rory, obviously, but obviously being there at the time, he was very um, articulate, intelligent, probably ahead of his time. Was that how you found yeah. him? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we're fighting for relegations, and his his, uh, his coaching was we we were watching Real Madrid and AC Milan and and show, which is, which is brilliant, which is which is I think is fantastic because if you can if you can do what the uh, what the best do, then you're gonna you're gonna come up with uh, good performances. But the mood around the camp was then that's not really helping us here when we're in a relegation battle against whatever. Um, but yeah, he was very, very well spoken, very intelligent man. Knew a lot about football, um, and he was awesome with me. He signed, he signed me, so um, yeah, he was. He was. I, I, I'm a big fan of his. Um, and then that was all of a sudden as well. We were, we were, training. I was preparing for. No, I wasn't preparing. Obviously, I was going back to Wall at that point, but I was doing my best for him. And then all of a sudden, he said. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm off, which was which is another shot. Well, it usually happens with managers anyway. You don't really see too much of an inkling and then all of a sudden they're, mm. they're off. But yeah, I enjoyed my time under it. So when you went, um, when you went back, was there always a, a part of your brain thinking, right, if there's, a, if there's a permanent move available here, this is where I want to go? Because I'd imagine you had quite a few offers in terms of your permanent future at that point. Well, when I was there on loan, it was always, I was going back to Wolves. I was going back to play for Wolves. Um, I was going to come back, uh, do a, got, got maybe 10, 15 games in the championship. Uh, my parent manager would have been able to watch those games over the summer and then have a good pre-season and then go back to Wolves. But it doesn't work out that way. Um, I think I came back, rocked my ankle in, in um, pre-season. Um, which which put me on the sidelines for a little bit, and then he he, uh, he signed Kev Foley at right back, which obviously wasn't a good signing. Very good player, um, which then nailed on that I think I had a couple of years left on on my contract, or maybe definitely a year left, and it was more of um, 
uh, McCarthy had an honest, honest conversation with me. He said, look, your game's going to be limited again. You don't want another year of not playing, especially at my age. Um, and I should look for passages new. And then at that point, it was like you said, I had quite a few offers. But because I'd already been to Peterborough and I enjoyed it and I was familiar with everything, I, and, and how... I, 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 assumed we, I assumed we were going to come straight back up, which we did. But at that point, I knew there was, there was the players in the, in the dressing room. We were, we were definitely capable of coming straight back up. So that's what tipped it over for me, really. Yeah. And Gary Johnson, obviously, as, as the manager at that point, um, in, in terms of the start of that campaign. And, and, and from recollection, I mean, everything was going OK. We were conceding a lot of goals. <laughs> we were scoring a lot of goals. Um, the people were away, I suppose. They were just different games which probably kept hammering a nail in his in his coffin in the end because obviously losing big against Charlton and, and Brighton around that period of time. Did you see it come in at all? Um, I don't know. Football, football, I can't remember back then if I'm quite honest, but football never, ever stopped surprising me. The decisions that are made. You, you, perfect example here at our club where, where I am now at Rovers where we were lit, we literally two or three points off automatic and then my manager leaves it and then I could be we could be doing really uh, doing really poorly and the manager given so much more time so I wouldn't be able to say mm. I wouldn't be able to say oh I saw it come in but um again it happened and managers leave and come come and go it's it's, it's more towards your performances really mm. what, what were the players saying because obviously Dan Ferguson came back into the club a lot of people would have known him obviously from his previous spell in charge of the football club were people sort of were you asking questions and saying what's he like <laughs> he didn't have a chance uh, I think I think I think the gaffer was um I think he was already in the building before the previous one left so I didn't have a chance to say oh what's this one like he was he already gave his Oh, I remember that day when he, when the gaffer walked in, uh, Darren Ferguson walked in and um, just addressed everyone. Um, I, I was a big Man United fan, massive Alex Ferguson fan, 92, class of 92. They're my heroes, basically. So when someone of that out bowls in with his statue and gave that speech to say, what I've just seen isn't good enough, and tomorrow we'll be training and sort of now, it's, it's more of an int- intimidation factor. I, I'm giggling now because at the time I was, I was a young player and it was really intimidating and it was, um, I wouldn't say it was exciting or anything like that. It was like, oh my God, what have I got here now? But obviously, it turned out one of the best, one of the best managers I've ever played under. So it was, it was awesome. Did then, um, as time went on, obviously get used to a manager. He wanted his fullbacks to, to bomb on. He wanted the, the athleticism coming from that area of the pitch. Was that something that you relished? Yeah, 100% I did. Of course I did. Um, when I, like I said, when I was at uh, when I was at Wolves, I was a, Mick McCarthy's team is is your back four is your back four, so that's all I, I was always taught. Then I went to on my on my loan periods while I was at Northampton for a bit, and then I was at, and then at, at Peterborough. It was a three five two formation, and I I was playing right of a three. And then I can't, it must have been an injury or something at right wing back. And then I went in there and I thought, and then I played it for a few weeks. I was like, first game was like, oh, this is, this is hard, hard work. And then once I was able to, once I was fit enough, that's, that position absolutely suited me. So that's where I nailed on my place as a right, right wing back. That is my, that was my best position type of thing. But obviously, um, Dan Ferguson also liked the diamond. So it was more of when I did slot back into a, a back four, the attributes that I'd learned going forward just slotted in really well with what, what you just said, where the manager wanted me to bomb on, bomb on a lot. And yeah, it, it just, it just suited me really. Yeah. Everyone talk, everyone I've spoken to, and obviously I was around it at the time, um, really felt that um, promotion was there for the take in that season. Obviously you had to go through the sort of playoff route before those playoff games actually happened. What was, what were you thinking? Were you thinking we're going to be a championship team next year or were you of a more, you know, we don't really know what's going to happen. There's a lot of strong teams. Obviously, Huddersfield were in the playoffs, MK Dons, rivals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Was there a lot playing on your mind, or were you confident? How, how I looked at it was, which again I'll, I'll always remember, is when we got when we got um, when we knew we were going into the playoffs. Um, we had uh, the manager spoke and basically explained how we were going to do how we were going to succeed in the playoffs. And once I had that which was basically 
other teams are now going to take, take their foot off the gas. They're going to sit in a classroom and they're going to learn this and learn that and do this. And he said, we're, we're just basically going to outwork everyone. So we're, going, we're not putting off the foot of the gas. We're putting more on the gas and we're going to train twice as hard and twice as much. And once we had that week's training or two weeks training before the first playoff game, I, I was very, very confident that we were going to have a good... I, I definitely wasn't saying, oh, we're going up here because it doesn't work that way at all, especially in cup, the playoffs or cup finals, uh, cup, cup situations. It doesn't work like that. But I knew that we would be in the best position to be able to succeed in the playoffs. And obviously we did. It, it, was, it was awesome. The, the first leg at MK Dons, every, everybody talks about you in that game because obviously it was it was a weird we, we watched it back fairly recently in actual fact the first half in particular we played very well we got into some great positions obviously didn't take the chances um didn't get the goals we did and then second half obviously the injuries sort of mounted up a little bit we conceded a few goals charlie lee got to get sent off and you think possibly i mean i remember sitting there thinking we're out of this here um what were you thinking as a player when we went sort of three three one down at three one down, but I was nervous at the start. I'll be honest, I was I was very nervous. Didn't know what was what to expect at all. I I, I was it's a bit different where I did the play went through playoffs with um with Wolves. Um, so I played in play playoffs atmosphere before, so I knew what to expect in that department. But I, at that point, I was known as like a really young player. I think I was sixteen. So no, I was not sixteen. Seventeen or eighteen, where I had really good experienced players dragging me through so I just had to go and play I felt when I went to Peterborough a little bit it was a bit more oh I was not, not experienced I wasn't that old either but I'd been through that at a higher level so it was more of right Mark you're kind of one to rely on here go and go and do your stuff which made me extremely nervous <laughs> so when I started playing that game but my nerves calmed very quickly because like you just said, first 20 minutes, I was very confident. We had so much, so many chances. I remember running down the, down the right hand side thinking, but well, we're going to score three, four here. But in the exact Peterborough manner, it wasn't, it wasn't that way. We also went and conceded three, which is how we seem to do stuff over there. It's absolutely still going on now. Just, yes, just concede three and then get back in the game and either draw or win it. Like, that's just how it, how it goes. But um yeah so when we went when we were three one down it was we had nothing to lose and we just used our determination and our fitness because of all the work that we'd done previous it was like right never say die is that what you man, were man united esque really never yeah. say die so that was the situation is that what you were thinking when you went on that run because uh, when, you, when you look back on it i, I mean I, I didn't realize how far you had actually run um because you, you went a long way um were you just thinking Head down. Let's see how far I get. Did you have a plan? Did you have anything in your mind? Yeah, like we're 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 not we're not going to get back in this tie from me sitting at right back and a me passing it back to the centre back or me lumping it forward for someone to chase on. We ain't going to get back into the game there. So I think I, I think we ran past. Yeah, it was Clates first. Played against Clates, mm. didn't we? Uh, sorry, played with Clates. Um, went past him first, and then I was in my stride. Then and once I'm in my stride, it's it's. A, very difficult for me to control that, <laughs> as, as I've been spoken about plenty of times, which is also more difficult for the team to stop me also. So once I was in my stride and I was away, it was just heading for the byline, really, to get across him for either of our strikers to tap in, which happened all through my career, really, a lot through Peterborough. And it didn't work out that way. It worked out even better that I ended up winning the penalty. But... That was in my mind. It was like you don't you don't win games from sitting at the back. I don't anyway. That's how I play. And, and, and be honest, when the referee blew his whistle, what were you thinking? Were you thinking he's given a free kick here? He's given a penalty? Honestly, I was thinking there was de there was definitely contact, but I'm not sure if it was enough to even give like a free kick. So I'm thinking, is he is he blowing here for a dive? Because if he is, I'm going to be I'm going to be absolutely fuming. But to my complete and utter supply, surprise, it was, no, you've won a penalty when I was nowhere near in the box and I was aware of that. And then I've got one of my closest people in football sent off in the playoffs. I'm thinking, what, what, what's just, what, that's, that's kind of where I was. And then for, for a short period of time, and then, and then you, you have to forget it in the game, like what happened happened. And then it was just waiting for Maka to slide at home, which happened, which was 
a, a, a great feeling. And then when I watched it back, I'm thinking, I'll, I'll, at that point when we finished, I'm worried about Gle- I'll, I'm, I'll explain the situation with Gleason. Gleason um, was was the chap that brought me down for MK Dons, but Gleason, I was in digs with Gleason, so Gleason played for. Um, Moved over from Ireland at 16, I'm guessing, or maybe even younger. And we were we were digs buddies, so we went through. Um, we, were in a, we were in an old lady's house together. We didn't have the best time there, so then we um, we jumped out of that and moved over to our other digs that we were in for for three years. So he was we we did everything together. He was near enough my brother, basically. We was dri- driving in together, seeing mates together, training together every day. We were we were very very close. Um, and then I'm just he pretty much got one of my brothers sent off. I'm thinking, nah, that's not that's that's not a nice feeling. So it kind of it was very mm. up and down for me there. Do you know what I mean? I we I'd done I'd done what I achieved for the club and for myself personally, but then there was also a sour taste to it because he didn't get he didn't deserve to get sent off for what he did. He he clipped my feet somewhere near half halfway line somewhere. So but that's football for you and that particular day it went my way it went Peterborough's way and and we achieved what we achieved which will be in the club's history for years and I'm very proud of that. Mm. I've talked to uh, the others about the second leg and what it was like and so we'll sort of skim on to the the final and and the final um, there's two things I remember clearly about the final obviously the goals that we scored um, but the celebration after with you rocking up at the hotel wearing the blue wig, a Budweiser <laughs> in one hand, a flag draped around you, um, you, you encapsulated what it, would, what it must be like for a player to enjoy a moment. Yeah, that was, that was exactly it. There was, no, uh, there was no time for me to think, right, at this moment in time, how, how many times am I going to get this in my life, let alone my career? There isn't any time for me to shower change put my nice clothes back on and then shake a load of people's hands and then that that weren't for me it was i'm enjoying this and i from this beer from this photo from this dancing around the 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 cup getting the medal and all this sort of stuff all of a sudden it was oh let's we got to get on the bus so then so i was right right right, i'll just probably just leave all my stuff here so I'm, I just left it all there and then jumped on the bus and then ended up back at the back of the hotel. I think, I think the thing that as well that I should mention is the night before um, obviously we were in Manchester all weekend and Manchester United played Barcelona um, on that uh, Saturday night I think it was a Saturday wasn't it um, and, and all the players were there Darren was there obviously I think Lee Tomlin uh, was winding the gaffer up with regards to a bet but you actually sat there in full Man United gear weren't you as a, as a United uh, a United fan, you, you, you proper went. Yeah. So I'd imagine you were pretty gutted in terms of how that went. Uh, yeah, it was, it was more, it, I did that to, to relax a little bit. It was, I don't, this, this particular night, if I'm sat up thinking about um, the nerves of the, of, the, of the game tomorrow for myself, it was like, no, I need to chill out, relax, don't use all my energy, whatever. And, that, and that's my form of doing it, being a football fan and, and watching, watching the game. Obviously, it weren't the best result, but... <laughs> I did watching watching the commiserations for United that night to go and to, I didn't want to I didn't want to do that the next day so that gave me a bit of fuel I imagine. Mm. Uh, the championship season, the first championship season went uh, went so well. In fact, I remember being so close to the to the top end of the table. In fact, I think the game against Leeds you scored in, didn't you? Um, yes. Yeah, cool. uh, yeah. Tom got sent off, or someone got sent off that day, and we ended up losing. That's a surprise. Someone got sent off. There was eight goals in the game. It's just, yeah, that's, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. I mean, that goal against Lee, uh, do, do you remember it? I mean, uh, as far as I recall, it was, uh, you sort of steamed in at the back post, the goalie might have made a ricket at it. And, and you, you sort of, it wasn't, you didn't score many in your time at Posh, but. No, that was a tackle. It wasn't even a tap in. It was, it was a tackle. It was, uh, the ball came across and then there, there was a coming together of players. I think it's Paul Taylor, me, Paul Taylor, their defender and the keeper coming out and I just went in and lunged towards it as a tackle and I got the last touch and, and, it, and it snuck in which is obviously another amazing feeling and we were up we, yeah we just beat Leeds United it's like absolutely ridiculous like we're at high 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 up in the in the championship which again massive season for me personally yeah that, that first season at the end of it obviously we were comfortably stayed up in the end was there I mean there must have been every, every player in the squad must have had people sniffing around them in terms of um, wanted to take elsewhere. Were you one of them as well? No, no, I, I didn't. Uh, um, uh, 
I can't remember. I can't remember. Not at that point. No, I was I was ready for next year. I was ready ready for next year. I, I I believe that season was showed us that we were more than capable of of holding our own in that league and uh, trying to do something special. Um, and I think we just blew up a little bit because we had by far the smallest squad, and we were we were a squad of rookies, genuinely just a squad of lads going out and playing and and. Just gave me loads of confidence for, for for the next year. Didn't work out. Didn't work. I, I, my head was on next year and what I was going to be able to achieve next year. Um, and it it didn't work out the best, but um, I enjoyed that season as well. Yeah, speaking to Grant McCann, it's very hard to talk about Palace because I think everybody that was involved in it knows that there were so many things that that went against us on that day. And I don't want to dwell on it yeah. too much, but yeah. Was it hard to respond to moving forward after that? Because I think it, it, no. it kind of left a little hangover, didn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, it were it wasn't fair. Like I, I, I just don't think if we did, we did, we did enough that season, and we did enough in that particular game to um, to stay in the league. But uh, and whatever was happening up north in Yorkshire when they were messing around and all that, I just, it, just, it just didn't sit well with me. It wasn't, we, we didn't deserve to go down. But again, that's football. And I, the year, two years previous, I didn't, other people didn't deserve to get sent off. And, and it just swings around about really. And we were really unfortunate to, um, to go down. And it, it did leave a hangover. Everyone was upset. There was people crying on the, on the, on the, um, on the pitch after the game. But to sh- show that, like, it it show it was it was hurt at that point that it was the most could, at that point it was the worst period of some people's careers, but I think ninety percent of the lads after that of all their careers have kicked on like it, everyone's gone off to the uh, gone upwards basically which shows the caliber of lads that we had there so it, it, things things change so quickly in football it, it it really is one day you're down in the dumps and then the next day you're you're on fire so um, you can't dwell on these days too much. Mm. Speaking to uh, obviously so many players that that played during that era that I've either spoken to or reminisced about, and it was a very um, unique set of lads in, in terms of where they came from and how they gelled. Um, yeah, Ryan Bennett was the first. Well, it's very rare, like very, yeah. very, rare, very rare to that from me. What in my career, looking at that and, and observing other squads, it's very rare for us to get such a group of talented players it, it, it's it wasn't there was no fluke about it everyone worked hard everyone improved when they I, I don't know a player who walked into Peterborough and didn't didn't improve um and and leave a better player there will be a very very small number and and that was because they would have came in the door not enjoyed what they saw and got off very quickly and other than that everyone's excelled mm. Um, speaking of Ryan Bennett, obviously one of the, the, the first players um, that we interviewed, and you look at someone like him who came in from from Grimsby, and obviously has gone on to have a really successful season in, in, in with seasons in the Premier League. Did you did you see that happening? Could you see the ability that he had to, to go to that level? Yeah, of course. There's a lot of lot of other people in the team. Ben, Benno was he was. He didn't put a foot wrong in in my eyes, to be honest. His, his character outside of football would have been a bit of he doesn't fit into the normal circle of I'm going to be a footballer. But and but on the pitch, he didn't put a foot wrong, so it didn't really didn't really surprise me at all that he's done really really well. I think the one that everyone looks at from the outside and and thinks how have they achieved what they've achieved, but those that were in it knew the ability was there. Is is Mendes, yeah. isn't it? You know, because we spoke Mendes. so many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mendes, obviously, I was at Wolves with Mendes, so I've, I've seen I've seen him play since he was thirteen, fourteen, I believe. I think I, I'm not that long ago. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I know he was coming through the youth team, and I knew full, I knew I played with him in the reserves, so I knew full well what he was capable of. But he's he's a, I think football for Mendes, in my opinion, is completely down to him. If he wants to, if he wants to be the best player in this country, he's more than capable of doing it. If he wants to do other things, he'll go and do other things. That's where he is with him. And I, and I believe that in the periods where I definitely remember Peterborough would have remembered him, it was in a period where he wanted to play football and he was, he was unstoppable and he was a pleasure to play with on the right-hand side. Um, but um, there's still more to come from him, I reckon. Yeah. And, and Lee Tomlin, who, who obviously had 
a ridiculous amount of ability at our place and, and had the ability to do all sorts of things, good or bad. Lee Tomlin. Was, Lee he, was, Tomlin. He, was he the perfect person to have in a dressing room? What, what a guy Lee Tomlin is. Oh, my God. I, we, we played Kettering, I think it was, in the, in the preseason. Was it Kettering? Mm. I think it was Kettering. Yeah. And we played these guys. I'll t- I'll say he, he's one of our best mates, so I think I'll be open about it. He, he was just the little fat guy in midfield that didn't run around. Oh, he's got a brilliant touch, but he's, he will never, ever be anything like it. Um, then we played the game. Can't remember the score. Tomo did all right. Come in the next day, and in, in transfer windows, players are always, there's always rumours of players coming in and out, and, and the lads are saying, come in. It, it, it gets a bit... When we've got a tight squad, new players that are coming in, we need to like suss him out. Do you, do you see what I mean? We're thinking, right? If he if he's going to come, is he going to improve our team or is he going to be a nightmare? And the ge- the general consensus was, why on earth have they signed a lad from Kettering? Who I think, I, I think it was Rushton and Diamonds actually thinking about it. Sorry, but quite, sorry um, yeah, yeah. I, I know it was some, one of those. Yeah, Rushton. I think why are we signed signed a lad from Rushton? Overweight, not. Pff, how is he going to get? I don't know where we were. How is he going to get us promoted, or how is he going to keep us in the league? He turned off, right? I think he worked hard. No, we had um, Ben McKenzie was a fitness coach. He got us um, working hard, and I don't believe he moaned at any point where um, Macca made him do any runs or anything like that. He got his head down and he worked, and he was by far the best player I've ever played with. He is unbelievable, and it's yeah, it's credit to him. It's to come from where he was to see where he is now. And he's another one that I believe there's probably more to come. He, similar to Mendes, if he, wants to, if he wants to get his head down and be the best player in the country, he's more than capable of doing it. Mm. Um, and yeah, in the dressing room, like, yeah, he, just his personality as well. Relaxed a lot of people. Um, he did some sh- shocking things that at, at the time we were thinking, oh my God, how has he got away with that? But we'll look back now and laugh. Um, he quit one game. He quit. He quit. Well, Swin- Swindon away we were. We got sent off. Was that was that a playoff game or was that just because they were one of our big rivals? But um, yeah, he did. Some, he got sent off, and he just said we come in the dressing room expecting to have a go at him. Obviously, he said, "Tomo, come on, man, we need you. Why are you getting yourself sent off?" And he went, "Oh, lads, I'm I'm quitting. I'm not playing anymore." And just sat there in his tracksuit, ready to walk out the door. Just he's bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Because I remember he, I think he, he might have been sent off in that game at Oldham where we lost 5 4 um, when we were like 4 1 up or in, in League One. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that, that guy, <laughs> the guy, I can't remember what his name was, bald head guy from, for Oldham. Um, and he, uh, I think he, he, he ripped you a new one, didn't he, on the, uh, on the left hand side. I remember, I saw the, saw the clip recently. Um, but that, that, that sort of encapsulates. He was the Scot- that Scottish fella, yeah. wasn't it? That yeah. Was like, he was another one that was like, what have we got here? And he had, a, he had the best game he's ever played in his life, that lad. <laughs> um, as you were coming towards the end of your, your, your sort of time at Peterborough, did you see the next chapter of your career? Were you looking for that next chapter? Because sometimes you can stay at Peterborough or any club for quite a period of time and you become stale or you become, you, you, you become settled. You kind of want a next challenge. Is that how it was with you? Uh, it was more of... Uh, when when I when I went to Peterborough, I, I'm similar to everyone. Be open and honest about it. It's it's not, and I think everyone knows, it's not the desirable club that you go grow up thinking. When I when I when I grew up kicking footballs in the garden, I didn't think, oh, I can't wait to put that Peterborough United top on and and have my ten years down there. It doesn't it doesn't work. It's no, not that, desirable. That was my dream. Not, that was that was my. That dream. was your dream. All right, sorry, mate. It was. Well, it was. I'm, I'm repping training gear. It's the closest I'll get. <laughs> so when. Um, so when I went there, it was more of right get games at the right level and do my best I can for that particular club. Um, so it was more of like a stepping stone, and it, and it is like a stepping stone club for a, for a lot of players. Some players are there for a year, have a storm a season, and get their get their big move. And some some players stay for a long time. I was there for a long. I, I did four years, didn't I? And it, that was longer than what I expected. Um, but I think when I was come, when it was the fourth end of the fourth season, it was kind of. If if I do stay here next year, then I'm going to get promoted. So it's 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 no problem, and I'll be in the league. But I want I want to be. But I also had a not 
I was a bit down about watching my 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 close teammates get their big moves off everywhere and 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 fulfill their dreams whilst I was sat behind and I felt that I was um producing as much as is what they as what they were if you, mm-hmm. if you know what I'm saying I was doing the same roles as what they were in the team and they were going off to here there and everywhere and I was kind of still there so I never really it's all about what you do yourself and I knew I was I was doing my business and um in Peterborough and and I was open open for our move and it and it did come again another shock I was sat sat at home um sat at home getting preparing to come back to Peterborough pre-season and um I had a phone call so hmm. I think the thing is um, it wasn't it, was, it wasn't oh I'm 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 going this year like it wasn't anything like that hmm. I think the thing about it is as well with with you in particular is that you know, a lot of that team were, were very open about doing things that in the community, you know, all, that, all the time spent, you know, opening this, that and the other. And, you know, some players down the years will always say, yeah, but really they, they hated it. Whereas I always felt with you that you kind of wanted to get involved in that kind of thing. And sometimes when players make a move to a club, as, as you said just then, you wouldn't have known much about Peterborough. You kind of immersed yeah. yourself very much within the, the community. Was that, was that important to you or did you just fall into that kind of role? Um, I enjoyed doing it. Didn't mind doing it at all. Um, it's different to other clubs in, in terms of location-wise. Peterborough's in the middle of nowhere. Whereas when I was at Wolverhampton, I was living living in Wolverhampton, ten minutes away from Birmingham. It was it, not the best place to, to start your career. Put it that way. So there was things going on here, there, and everywhere. When you went down to Peterborough, you you were a Peterboroughian. You weren't anywhere else. You weren't commuting from anywhere. You were in Peterborough. So yeah, I am amused. Uh, what word did you use there? Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Immerse that word there. I immersed myself into the into the um, surroundings and I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, obviously, all the players that you played with during your, your Peterborough time, as you said, most have gone on to be really successful. Who, who would you handpick as the, the best you played with? Was it Tomo? Yeah, top. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 when people ask me that question, it's really hard to nail it down because there's so many different things like it's you, you you can't just put them oh he's the best player like it, it's it's none of those because ability wise footballing ability and Tomo would be yeah um if you want if you wanted someone that was a winger or or unstoppable at, at attacking someone then it's got to be Mendes but then if it is right well the most important thing in football is to score goals and you've got then you've got Gailey so it's like or Who's the most hardest working? Then you've got you've got Smudge. Who's the? It's, there's there's many, there's many many. Who's there to score tapping? Maka. Who's there to score the free kicks? Maka. Like it, there's a li- If you give me a list of different things, how would you? How would you? Paul Taylor was another one. Paul Taylor, when he was playing, was unstoppable. He's a bit quite, like how he didn't fly and have this amazing career where everyone knows his name. It, it, it's frightening. You you couldn't get the ball off him. But how would you? How would you um, how would you measure the best player? Because there's so many different. Ryan Bennett didn't put a foot wrong. Like I can't remember the lad making a mistake. That's probably more important than other roles that get. Yeah. Big. Yeah. Big, the thing is, um, is that, like, when people who asked the question, they said, "Right, if you're picking an eleven from all the players that you've watched during your, you know, 19 years at the football club." Yeah. I I, I could spend five hours just on strikers. Because you, <laughs> yeah. what, what, you know, how, you, looking you get at, it wrong. Yeah, but how you, you, you get it at strikers in partnerships? Are you looking at pure finishes? Are you do you what? Could Gale and Mikel Smith play together? Could they do this? And this? I mean, like Dwight Gale, for me, is probably one of the best finishers we've ever had um, at the football club. Um, but would you put him ahead of you know Mikel Smith in terms of the goals that he scored, or do you look at eras? It's so, it's so hard, isn't it? The only yeah, thing I, I know, the only thing I know yeah. is that I would I would have Mark Little at, at right back. That's that's the only easy, easy one to. That's say. a lovely thing to say, mate. That's a lovely thing to say. I mean, there I'm, must have been a shortage of right backs over the over the last well, couple of decades. You know, but Martin, nice. Obviously, is the now the MK MK does. But I think again, you know, do you, do you want sort of your full back to be bombing on? Do you want them to defend? I mean, it, it, yeah. you can have the conversation is, yeah. forever. But um, final question before I let you go and renovate the rest of that house. Um, uh, there's so many players that have obviously come back. Boyd Tomlin. Um, Mikel Smith came back for a while. McLean came back for a while on on loan and what have you. Um, you you obviously have had probably the opportunity to come back at, at certain points. Are you a player that that 
looks at coming back to a place you've already had success or do you have to bear that in mind when you when you're looking at moves yeah you do you do bear that in mind like the reason why I came came back from when I had my loan was I was it's a bit of a gamble isn't it if if I if I've got two clubs um after me at the same level as Peterborough and then I can go to this new place some people relish it. I don't. I like being comfortable. Some people are like, oh, there'd be a new challenge there for you and uh, new surroundings to relax yourself into and this, that and the other. But there's Peterborough where you know, you know, I know what I'm going to get if I go back to Peterborough. I know what I'm going to get. I feel more comfortable when going back there. Is, is that answer your question? Is that, is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's sometimes, you know, when players come back, they don't reach the heights that they'd reached before. And then they feel they probably look it upon their, their time a little bit tarnished and people don't want to do that. Whereas some relish the yeah. opportunity to create different memories. No, I wouldn't have, that, that, that wouldn't come in, come into my thing again. It, that, that would be more of a challenge that I would relish. Can I go back now and perform better than when I did before with more experience behind me? That, that would be, that would be my challenge. Not, not, oh, I'm going to move to a new city and meet new, new pe people. If I went back to Peterborough now, is the staff, I, I know the majority of the staff. I know exactly what is expected of me I, and the, the, the board, the, the chairman, all of that yourself, that, that is, I know what, what, I'm, what I'm coming to there and I wouldn't hesitate at all to, to, to come back to something like that. And, and I'd say that to any player looking to sign for Peterborough and, Kind of snub their nose. Up. There was a couple. There was a couple of lads that snub their nose up for coming to coming to play for Peterborough. But um, yeah, the location is in. It is in the middle of nowhere. But that's a massive positive if you're trying to get your career on 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 the roll. And we've got a Nando's now, Litz. I mean, what more do you want? Do you know what I mean? When I went there, there was nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, um, Nando's turned up. Wagon. No, yeah, Wagon Mom is there. Wagon Mom is there. They built the whole of like. All sorts, absolutely all sorts. And I'm, when, I, when, when I have been back there, I'm thinking, where was this when I was here? There's none of this. It was built on absolutely. the success that we had. At we, had Dom we had Domino's on Sugar Way. That's what we had. Still there. And the China, there was the Chinese there. Still there. Still there. Uh